You're tuned to WROW Radio in Albany, New York. Time, 5.30. Now, another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. A daring and ingenious scheme for a payoff. As in just one minute, we bring you Perfect Plan, written by Peter Fernandez. Thirsty people everywhere prefer ice-cold Pepsi-Cola. And because it's light, it refreshes without filling. Charlie... Be sociable. I am, Kay. Pepsi is a favorite of thirsty people from Maine to Hawaii, from Alaska to Florida. Charlie. It's perfect for parties or picnics, so serve Pepsi to your guests. That's helpful, but... This is the sociable part. Keep plenty of Pepsi ice cold and ready. Remember, it goes fast because everybody likes Pepsi. Singing still sounds more inviting. May I? Be sociable. Look today with Pepsi. Drink light, refreshing Pepsi. Stay young and fair and get an air. Be sociable. Have a Pepsi. But singing doesn't say, pick up an extra carton of Pepsi today. Better yet, get a case. You do that. There you are, Jason. There's the house. Yeah. I'll pull in here so that milkman can't spot us. Yeah. Good. He didn't even notice us. We're right on schedule. Put that gun away. Just being prepared. Well, we've got time. Relax. We have exactly 14 minutes before he leaves the house and walks down to that bus stop. By now, they'll just be having their breakfast. <laughs> Ah, good morning, Princess. Henry, you did it again. Ah, there was no point in waking you, Liz. Morning, honey. I'm perfectly capable of making my own breakfast. But I wanted to have it ready for you. Today of all days. It's just that in the mornings lately, I... I know, I know, Mother. Here, (laughs) here, sit down. I'll pour you some coffee. Thanks, Henry. It doesn't seem possible, does it? Only three more months and the baby will be born. That's all, only three months. And your baby's going to be beautiful, Liz. <laughs> and yours. Mm. I hope it doesn't look like me. <laughs> Here you go. Well, Henry, the decision is due this morning. Uh-huh. If that board doesn't make you manager... I'll just continue to be assistant manager. But with another mouth to feed soon. Well, down it, Liz, I've worked hard for that promotion. And you'll get it. You're the best assistant manager that bank has. There's absolutely nothing to prevent you from getting that promotion, Henry. I hope not. Well, I'll call you either way. There'll be only one way. Goodbye, dear. What's keeping him? The bus doesn't leave for five minutes. He's still got time. Oh. You listen to me, Jason. This whole job, we move carefully and slowly. Remember that. Sure, sure. We didn't spend weeks tailing him, working this out just to have you get edgy now. Hey, look. Hmm? He's coming out of the house. Oh, yeah, I see him. Now, remember. Think, Jason, think. Sure. I'll go and join him now at the bus stop. And you keep away from his house for at least five minutes. Okay. Good luck. (laughs) The way this job is planned, Jason... We don't even need luck. Good morning. Hmm? Oh, Uh, morning. Is this seat taken? Uh, uh, No, no, forgive me. Uh, Let me move my briefcase. Thanks. There you are. Thank you. Aren't you Henry Travers? Why, yes. Yes, have we met before? Oh, we've merely ridden this bus together a few times. I'm Shirley Brisbane. Well, how do you do? I, I'm trying to do a little work before I get to the office, if you'll excuse me. Of course. Are those loan applications, Mr. Travers? Oh, you're familiar with this kind of work? Well, I've been making a study of your procedures. I expect to get a loan from you this morning. You do? Sure. Let me see, you said Shirley Brisbane. I don't recall your application. In exactly one hour and 15 minutes, I'll expect you to grant me a loan of (laughs) $50,000. Yes, ma'am, just like that. Just like that. 
And now, all jokes aside, Miss Brisbane, I do have this work to finish. Oh, go right ahead, Mr. Travers. There's still plenty of time. Yes? Mrs. Travers, I'm from Commercial Trust. Oh. Oh, my goodness. I I didn't expect anyone so early. I'm not even dressed in the house. But come in, won't you? Thanks. Henry warned me that the bank might send someone around in connection with his promotion, but I didn't expect anyone so early. Sit down, won't you? I I just finished coffee. Would you like some? It's still hot. Oh, no, thanks. Would you mind very much, Mr... Mr... Collins. Jason Collins. Would you excuse me for just a few moments, Mr. Collins, while I change my clothes? No. What? It won't take me long. Well, neither will this. Just a few preliminary questions. Please, uh, sit down, Mrs. Travers. Well, I... Sit down. Well, all right, Mr. Collins. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Travers, but according to my watch, you should be at your desk in 12 minutes. What? How did you know? We just have time for you to consider my loan application. I don't consider that a very funny joke. No joke, I assure you. At a quarter after nine, I expect $50,000. Oh, you do? Otherwise, otherwise you'll never see your wife alive again. What? What are you talking There's about? There's someone with her now who won't hesitate to kill her. What? Shh. Don't attract attention to us, Mr. Travers. What's this all about? When you get to the bank, call your home. You can talk to my friend, Jason. Satisfy yourself that Elizabeth's life depends on what you do. Then what? Make out all the necessary papers for a loan. I don't care how you do it, as long as they look authentic. As long as no one stops me, because at 9.15, I'll be in to pick up that money. I still don't know if this isn't some kind of cruel joke. When we get to the bank, call your home. Then you can be sure this is no joke. Well, come in, Mr. Travers. Uh, oh, yes, O'Malley. Well, today's the day, sir. Why? I said, uh, good luck, sir. I hope you get the promotion. Oh. Well, just a moment now, and I'll have this gate open. Oh, uh, by the way, Mr. Cromwell came in a few minutes ago, sir. I showed him into your office. Oh, I haven't time for him. But it's Cromwell himself. I don't care. There you are, sir. Oh, Mr. Travers, my dear, dear head. I'm sorry, Mr. Cromwell, but could you wait outside? I've got to make a private phone call. I beg your pardon. Please, it's, it's urgent. I... I... Can't explain it just now. Oh? Hmm. Well, with Forbes Zealand retiring, I've decided to approve you for manager at this morning's board meeting, and I came here early to have a chat with you first. I haven't but... time. Please, Mr. Cromwell, if you can wait for just a little while. Oh, very well, Travers. Very well. Now. this? Is that you, Travers? Yes, yes. Are you, are you... I've been waiting for your call. You're late. Elizabeth, is she all right? She doesn't know a thing about what's going on yet. Let me talk to her. No. When I expected your call, I sent her upstairs to change her clothes. Your wife's okay so far, but if you wanted to stay that way, you got a lot of work before a quarter after nine. Listen, I'll do my best. I'll, I'll try to get the money, but what you're asking is almost... Never impossible. mind. You just see that you get it. If you don't want to come home and find your wife dead. But I will. Hello. Hello. Oh. oh, Mr. Cromwell, good morning. Uh, one of the other tellers informed me that you were here. Kind of early for you, isn't it, sir? Well, now, don't tell me that you, too, have some objections to me being here. Oh, indeed, no, sir. Well, good. Then you won't mind if I stand here by your counter? Oh, not at all, sir. I want to keep an eye on Mr. Travers' office. Oh? I want to know what he's up to. 
Now, tell me, have you noticed anything peculiar about him lately? Peculiar? No, sir. Uh, what do you mean? Well, this morning, for instance, the man seems absolutely frantic. We haven't even opened for business yet. There, there he is now, rushing out of his office and going into Frisbee's. Now, what do you suppose he could be up to? Ah, good morning, Henry. Heard anything about the promotion yet? Uh, this, this loan, Jim, you forgot to add your endorsement. Oh, hmm. <laughs> uh, you're nervous this morning, Henry, but you needn't be. I think the promotion is yours. Uh, Jim... Here, I, I I need your signature. They'll be in for this money in a few minutes. Well, all right, Henry. Well, let's see what this is all about. Hmm. I don't recall this application. Well, it came up at the last meeting. You were at the dentist that afternoon. Oh, yes, yes, the 14th, of course. Well, do we have the collateral? Uh, yes, yes, Jim. The, the stocks and bonds were analyzed more than sufficient. Equity Products Corporation. Never heard of it. What do they do, Henry? A transcript of the meeting is available. I, I, I haven't time to go into this with you. And I haven't had a chance to read the transcript yet. Well, but you signed this. You must feel that it's worthwhile. I do. Now, let me see. It's just 9 o'clock. It is? And I won't have time to read the transcript now. So I'll sign this on your say so. Uh, here, uh, use my pen. Oh, okay. There you are. Hey. And, and thanks... Thanks, Frisbee. Henry, the promotion's in the bag. Relax, Henry. In just a moment, we will return for the concluding act of... Suspense. When Dr. Jonas Salk gave the nation the vaccine against polio. As a nation, we sighed relief. Another enemy of health, one affecting the children, had been conquered by science. Now we can worry about something else. Many people took just such an attitude, and it appeared to be justified. For the first years after the vaccine saw a remarkable drop in cases of crippling polio. But last year, the figures rose again. If the vaccine works... Why did America have more cases of polio last year than the year before? The answer is painfully simple. Many people neglected to avail themselves of the vaccine's protection. A minimum of three shots is still the recommended dose. And it takes time for maximum protection, for shots must be spaced apart. If you have neglected your polio shots while immunizing your children, you are still in danger yourself. People under 40 who failed to get their shots are now chief statistical polio victims. See your doctor or visit your clinic or health department. Lose no time getting your shots to help stamp out polio. It's 17 minutes past nine, Mr. Travers. Aren't you finished yet? Almost. You wanted cash, didn't you? That's right. I've got more forms to fill out. I need more time. Jason expected the phone call two minutes ago. If he's done anything to hurt Liz... You're in no position to bargain, Mr. Travers. Just do what you have to do. All right. There. That's finished. Now I have to go to the vault and show these to the guard. Get in and get the money. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Well, you'd better be. Henry... Do you think we'll be able to have our little chat soon? Now, the meeting is not far off, and no, I... not, not now. Henry, what is going on? Now, will you tell me? I can't, I can't, and please don't ask me. Well, I just don't understand. Uh, here, O'Malley. Oh, thanks, Mr. Travers. Go right in, sir. And uh, see that I'm not disturbed. I have a large amount of cash to assemble here. Oh, yes, sir. All right, Mr. Travers. Now... Ill, Mr. Collins. Can I get you something? It's 20 after 9. I know. That meeting about Henry's promotion will be taking place in only five minutes. That don't matter. Who cares about a meeting? Well, I certainly do. Why doesn't that phone ring? I really don't understand why it's so urgent. Two more minutes. That's all I'm going to wait. Two more minutes. There. 
You're all, all set now, Mr. Travers? Uh, yes, yes, O'Malley. Oh, Mr. Cromwell's waiting for you just outside. Oh. He insists on a word with you, sir. Oh, no. Henry, just a moment. Mr. Cromwell, I'll explain later. I want the explanation oh, now. Let go of my Don't arm. Don't be a fool. Don't try to stop me, please. This cash form I got from O'Malley just now and the copy of the loan application seem, well, they seem fraudulent. They're not. Frisbee endorsed that application, so did I. It says here that it was approved as per the meeting of Tuesday the 14th. Now, I sat in on that entire meeting. This loan was not approved. It wasn't even discussed. O'Malley. Uh, yes, sir. Now, call the 19th no, precinct. No, listen yes, to me. Go ahead, yes. O'Malley. Now, what is it, Henry? I'm listening. <laughs> She's waiting in my office. Unless she gets this money now and calls him, he'll kill my wife. Oh, Henry, I wish you'd told me this sooner, but uh, we'll go in there, give her the money, and when the police get here, we'll keep them out of this until your wife is safe. Thank you, Mr. Cromwell. Oh, good Thank luck. You. Okay, I've got it. Where? Gone. Oh, my. What are you doing? She must have slipped out when we were talking. I've got to catch her. Now you're lying. Now stop. Stop. No, I've got to catch her. Now stop. Him. Please, no, 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 please no, you've got to let me go, will you? Let him. That's it. Hold it. No, no kill her. Let me go, will you? Henry. Now, Henry, you haven't oh, a chance. listen to me. But I've already listened, Henry, and I think we'd better wait in your office until the police get... No, Mr. Crumb. I'm sorry, Henry. Bring him along, O'Malley. Oh, please. Go ahead, Henry, and call your home. And tell whoever you think is there that the woman's already left with the money that she didn't want to take the time to call. He won't believe me. He'll think she was caught. He, he might have killed Liz already. If you're telling the truth, this is the only thing you can do right now. But it's obvious what the truth is. All right, all right. She was supposed to talk to him herself. He'll know I'm lying. Well, you've got to persuade him that the plan is working. If there is any such plan... Elizabeth, are you all right? Oh, darling. I've been so anxious to hear from you. Did you get the promotion? What? Oh, Liz, never mind. Put him on. Who? Oh, you mean Mr. Collins. No, he's already gone. He said he couldn't wait. Henry, are you the new manager? Gone? Thank goodness. Just a minute, Travers. Give me that phone. Hello? Yeah, this is Walter Cromwell. Oh, hello, Mr. Cromwell. How are you? Uh, well, I, I, I'm fine. Uh, about that man... Mr. Collins? Did he threaten you? Goodness, no. He just seemed very nervous, but there definitely was nothing wrong. I see, I see. Well, thank you very much, Mrs. Travers. Goodbye for now. Well, Henry... Ah, oh, 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 the police. Good morning, Lieutenant. Uh, hello, Mr. Cromwell. Oh, what's happened? Well, we've been very fortunate, Lieutenant. We just prevented this man, one of our most respected officers, from absconding with a large amount of the bank's funds. If I was going to steal money, I would have been much more clever than this. They threatened to kill my wife unless I gave them $50,000. Who threatened? I just spoke to your wife. She doesn't know anything about it. We're going down to the precinct, and we'll get a full statement. If it adds up to the way it sounds, we'll book this man. Well, that'll suit me just fine, Lieutenant. <laughs> Here's your wife, Mr. Travers. We've just finished questioning her. My poor darling. Henry, I had no idea what was going on this morning. I almost wish you had. Then they might believe me. Has my lawyer arrived yet? He's on his way, dear. If I'm to be booked, I want to be... Mr. Travers, when your wife gave us a statement, we checked the entire board of directors at your bank. That man who was at your house this morning, he wasn't on any official business, as your wife had been led to believe he could have been a burglar posing as an investigator in order to case the house. That's ridiculous. Or he could be the man we're looking for. Now, he has no record, so we have no mug shots of him. But the woman... Yes? Uh, maybe you can spot her in one of these pictures of various women. All of them from our files in here. Yes. Yeah, take a good look, Mr. Travers. Let me see now. No. No. <laughs> Not this one either. No. 
No, she's not here, Lieutenant. Is that a fact? Well, then I'm afraid we'll have to no, hold you. No, no, wait, you. wait. Let, let me see that one again. Well, which one? This? No, 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 that one. Oh. Yes. Yes, this could be her. Now that I take a second look at her, it could be. Uh, but you're not certain. How can I be? The woman I saw had blonde hair. This one has black. But the face seems to be the same. Then let me tell you, Mr. Travers, the woman in that picture is dead. <laughs> I don't see how I have a chance, Russell. Just look at that jury. Look at their faces. Every single one of them believes I'm guilty. I strongly advise you to plead guilty and escape this trial, Henry. You might have been given a light sentence a year or two, but, but now, with, without any concrete proof, with nothing to back up your defense, if they do bring in a guilty verdict, well, it could mean ten years. Ten years. Counsel? Counsel for the defense, are you ready to begin your summation? I am, Your Honor. Very well, then please begin. Good luck. <clears throat> Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we concede that the evidence offered in defense of this poor man has been purely circumstantial. However, let me point out that even circumstantial evidence... Whether of guilt or innocence... Mr. Prosecutor, if you wish to hold a conference with one of your witnesses, kindly do so outside of this courtroom. This defendant is entitled I'm to... I'm sorry, a... Your Honor, but the police lieutenant here has just brought me some information which has a direct bearing on this whole trial. Very well. Please give the court that information. The police lieutenant has just informed me, Your Honor, that a similar robbery was attempted this morning at the National Exchange Bank and that the woman has been caught. She is the sister of the woman identified by the accused. She has confessed to the crime for which this man has been on trial. The state wishes to make a motion for the dismissal of the indictment. That motion is granted. Case dismissed. <laughs> uh, uh, Henry? Oh, Good morning, Mr. Cromwell. I, uh, I trust the new manager feels at home. Uh, um, uh, uh, Henry, uh, uh, by the way. Yes, sir? Well, after all, you can't blame me. I, I, I saw the young lady this morning, and uh, uh, this isn't the first time that a bank official tried to run off to Mexico with uh, uh, such a tasty young dish. Suspense. been listening to Perfect Plan, written for suspense by Peter Fernandez. In a moment, the names of our players and a word about next week's story of suspense. Hi. Maybe you'll recall this tuneful reminder of times past. <laughs> This is Dennis James with something else worth remembering. It's this. You're so right to stay regular with Kellogg's All Brand. See, it's the normal, natural way to youthful regularity. The whole brand content of Kellogg's All Brand supplies your system with all the bulk-forming food that you need every day. There's only one All Brand. It's Kellogg's All Brand. So relieve irregularity from lack of bulk, as millions do, with a bowl full of Kellogg's All Brand each morning. A double L hyphen B R A N. It's Kellogg's All Brand. in tonight's story were George Petrie as Henry, Elizabeth Lawrence as Shirley, Paul Potter as Cromwell, and Patsy Bruder as Elizabeth. Listen again next week when we return with Two Came Back by Ronald Dawson and Joseph Cochran from a story by Jules Archer. Another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. 
News analysis next, followed by latest CBS News and Have Gun Will Travel on CBS Radio.